Hey peeps, welcome to the Culture and People cast. Today we have Greg. Greg, in a few sentences, please tell us who you are and what you do. Sure. Uh, first, thanks for having me. Uh, my name is Greg Kilstrom. I am the CEO and co-founder of CareerGig. And um, yeah, we just launched a few months ago, so very excited startup in the in the contract and freelancer employment space. Yeah, so tell, tell us real quick about well, like, what is CareerGig? Who's it for? Yeah, absolutely. So we work with, we connect freelancers and the companies that hire them. And so for freelancers, we offer health benefits, retirement, all kinds of benefits that you're, if you've been at a salary job and had a full-time full -time job for a while, you kind of get used to that stuff. Um, you know, health, life, disability, all, all of that. Um, and on the contractor side, we make it really easy to find highly skilled, certified contractors exactly when and where you need them. And, and really our, our platform is a marketplace that ties those two things together. Yeah, and, and by just launching in May, you guys just, it's a, it's a prime time for you. We, companies need you, talent need you. I'm grateful that you guys are doing your good work. Okay. So in this culture in people space, Greg, what is the best thing about influencing that for you? Yeah, I mean, I think the, uh, so I come from a, a marketing background and I owned a, owned a marketing agency for a while. And um, I shared a little bit about this with you earlier. I think where I come, where I came from is a very on the surface kind of branding mentality of let's just say really nice things and let's hope they're true and let's believe they're true. But um, a lot of times what we've been finding, there's been a, there's been a big uh, or a lot of talk about customer experience, which is so important that, you know, you can't have um, repeat buyers and people that refer your company to others without a good customer experience. Well, take that a level further and you can't have good customer experience if the employees delivering that product or service or creating new products are not happy and really understand and are aligned with the value of the organization. And so I think tying that end to end. And then I think it really starts at leadership and, you know, what do, does leadership understand the values of the organization? Are they finding the right people to push the culture in the right direction? Are they measuring all of these things? So I, I think that when you really understand not only where you are, but where you want to go internally as an organization, and then all of these things, you know, if it's a sales problem, if it's a, a brand reputation problem, all of those things, none of them are easy, but they become simpler because you've solved the problem at the core. Agreed. Yeah. And it sounds like you're marrying your experience and your strengths with this HR sort of OD people space really well. And that's how I got my start actually into HR, um, you know, over 15 like about 15 years ago, I fell into it by asking a lot of questions on the employer branding side, right? The company I worked for at the time had huge growth goals, but yet nobody was talking about us or knew who we were. And we were a very local company. I thought, how are we ever going to do that? So I started asking questions. They're like, did you want to come do this then? And I was like, oh, okay. So now here I am, you know, 15 plus years later. Pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting how, yeah, it's curiosity. I, same, same with, you know, curiosity kind of kept driving and, you know, peeling and peeling the onion, so to speak, and just finding, you know, well, okay, if we figure this out, then what needs to be there in place? And, and it just, it, it's, and it's, it's good. It's authentic and it's, it's real when you actually get to the core of, of what you're trying to do. And I think that's, that's really anybody's goal. Yeah, and we're talking about humans, right? Humanity, really important. And I know, Greg, you've already sort of hinted at this, but a lot of the leaders that I'm talking to are indicating that engaging employees is a challenge. What are your thoughts? Yeah, and I think it's only getting more challenging with you know growth and remote work and, and all that. So, I mean, I think, you know, pre-COVID, we had un when unemployment, at least in the United States, was, you know, near record lows. Everyone was talking about employee experience, um, being necessary in order to have retention and, and things like that. Now, I think they're talking about employee experience in a slightly different way. I mean, there are obviously a lot, unfortunately, a lot of employees have been furloughed, laid off and, and so on and so forth. But um, employee experience and engagement takes on a new meaning when you don't, you can't look over somebody's shoulder, talk, walk over to their desk and, and say hi and, and just kind of check in on them. So I think it's, it's one of those things that's always been important. It's just we're finding a, a new definition of a, a new definition of engagement, I think, right now. And it doesn't mean that you have to talk to someone constantly. It means you need to be clear in your direction. You need to really understand that employee. Like 
maybe they don't want to get a, a text message or a Slack message every five minutes, like, hey, did you do this? But, you know, some people are, you, I, I actually think it's, it's teaching people to learn behavior in a, in a much different way where they could take shortcuts and call a meeting. And, you know, a lot of, a lot of problems, um, people think they can solve them by calling a meeting and have everyone in the same room, but not everyone interacts in the same way. So I think it's kind of forcing people to understand behavior a little more. Oh, agreed. Behavioral, like the strengths of somebody, what's their like highest and best use and then preferences, right? Which have a lot to do, some to do with their strengths, but maybe just personality, right? Do you tend to be more introverted? Do you tend to be more extroverted? It's a really, leaders have got to cater to the individual needs of their employees more than ever. Totally. So maybe you'll have a resource for this because I know you've got this book, but I'm wondering from an, a tactical advice perspective, what would you tell these organizations that do want to evolve their culture or their people operations? Yeah, definitely. And um, yeah, I, uh, this does um, track back to my book, but I think, I think it's not enough. There's been plenty of books written about that. Yes, employee experience is really nice and you should have it. And customer experience is good and it drives sales and all those. I think what really it comes down to is operationalizing this. And in order to operationalize something, um, you need to understand, I mean, again, what does success look like? Do you have the metrics in place to do that? If not, what, what are they? Um, how do you measure some of these things like organizational culture or engagement or, or these, you know, any number of elements. And so I did, I, I wrote a book called the center of experience that, was the it's the antithesis of there's a few you know statistics quoted in there about that all of this stuff is good but it's more about how would someone operationalize this you need to have not only met metrics and measurement in place but governance over okay you don't just say this is good and create a process and then walk away how do you continuously improve this and it's going to look completely different for different organizations but i think having a framework in place to do that means Everybody can be involved to some extent. Um, and I think it's also important to show that there's a relationship between employee and customer experience. And so measuring both and measuring the relationship, you may not get an immediate growth on the, on the customer and sales and marketing side of things, but you will if you, if you invest in it. And to start measuring both of those from the start means that when you see those changes, that's, that's all you know, upper management needs to see is like, okay, if the numbers are moving, then um, not only retention is is improving, and so that's saving money, but repeat buying and you know people buying more and more often, all that is increasing. Yeah, agreed. I, I don't from a from a data perspective, <clears throat> I know that HR and OD and that type of space, even talent development, historically hasn't been known for that. But really, in the fifteen years that I spent, there, a lot of progress has been made in looking at how do we operationalize because it feels like we're talking about humans. But this doesn't have to be soft and cuddly stuff. This has to be like we're we're just how do we treat them like humans and give them really meaningful work and engage them that way. And I'd much rather see organizations invest in their talent with great leaders than putting together some huge marketing plan on building their customer experience. Because yeah. if you don't, like you said, if you don't focus on the employee, it's just sort of wasted money. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it might, it might, or it might be aspirational, but it's not genuine because it, it would be, it would be much better to start on the inside, create a great culture, and then you can go to market. And then everything that you're saying is true instead of what we wish was true and maybe we'll work and maybe it'll sort of retroactively, um, you know, work itself out or, you know, that, that rarely how, I mean, the companies that you know of that have great cultures and happy employees as well as happy customers, they didn't just stumble into that. I mean, that was intentional. They may have had groundwork laid already when they were a young company or whatever, but they are intentional about that. And it's, you know, it's, it's not luck. Yeah, agreed. So we have just about 30 seconds today, Greg, who would you want to shout out as a great leader doing wonderful stuff for people and culture? Um, sure. There's, yeah, there's, um, I would say I, there's a few people that I've interviewed for my podcast in the last year. I've got my own podcast, The Agile World. Um, I obviously there, the um, hotel industry has had a uh, particularly tough time these, these last several months, but I interviewed um, David Rodriguez, their CHRO, um, and just phenomenal guy, um, PhD in organizational culture, and 
I really think, I mean, I was always a fan of the company and, and you know, a Titanium member or whatever, but like after talking with them and sitting down, had a really, you know, had a, had a much better appreciation for that, that organization. So definitely, definitely recommend. Awesome. We will link him in the notes. Greg, I thank you for your time today. Everybody check out Career Gig and I'm sending everyone peace and progress.